Hello, welcome to this online tutorial on trade unions. Uh, so don't forget to play pause and at the end, if you didn't answer anything correctly, everything correctly, repeat. Uh, so first thing, can you define what a trade union is, please? Pause. So hopefully you have a trade union is a representative body that seek to protect and improve the working conditions of their members. Okay, so uh, as you're probably aware, trade union membership has been fallen in the UK over the past couple of decades. <clears throat> um, so the next thing I need you to write down is what is the main rules or the key objectives of trade unions? So pause the video and see if you can identify them. So hopefully you have some of the key roles. Main one in the news is wages. They try to negotiate higher wages. Uh, number five is very big as well. They try to improve the pension of their union workers. They protect from unfair dismiss dismissal. They try to improve working conditions and they also provide training and education to their workers. So what I would like you to do now is pause the video and have a think how they get these um, or how they get these requests. So what they do first off is they take part take part in negotiations. So the union will negotiate with the employers and try and fight for some of the key roles that you can see above. However, if they break down, write down what the trade unions will do next. So the trade unions will take part in what's called industrial action. And hopefully you've identified the three possible uh, formats of this. So they are to strike, which is taking a day or week, however long, off work, in order to pick it and um, you know try and get public support for their um, their cause. They can go slow, which is literally just re reducing their productivity whilst in work. And work to rule is a uh, industrial action whereby they only work their contracted hours. They do not partake in overtime. They do not partake in any duties either. Okay, so that is industrial action. See if you can now recall the term whereby the strength of trade union negotiations um, is. So what, what term can you, you use to discuss how strong a trade union uh, power has? So... I don't think I explained that too well, but or asked the question too well. <clears throat> but the success of trade unions depends upon their collective bargaining power. And this will come down to the size of the membership, so how many members they have. So unions like Unison and Unite in the UK, <clears throat> which are big, big healthcare unions, will have a lot of members, and therefore if they strike, it will have a big impact. And also the strategic importance of the industry. So, for example, if the tube drivers in London strike, that has a massive impact upon a lot of massive industries like banking and retail within London. So they may have more collective bargaining power. <clears throat> uh, now what I want you to try and do is pause the video and draw a trade union diagram, please. So hopefully you've got your axes labeled correctly. They're wage rate and employment. Uh, we have got a supply of labour curve. We have got a demand of labour curve. <clears throat> and initially, we'll have a wage rate that employers, um, employees sorry, aren't necessarily happy with. <clears throat> so unions will negotiate for higher wages at P1, which creates this union wage. Okay, so I'm hoping you fully annotated this diagram. So if we move this Q1 here, from Q1 to Q star, that fall, that will be a fall in employment. Okay, so from Q star to Q1, there will be a contraction in the demand for labour. So employers will not be willing to employ as many workers now, so they will unfortunately have to make some workers redundant. However, the higher wage rate has incentivized more workers to seek work in this particular industry. So therefore, the difference between these two 
the excess supply is what we technically call unemployment. So there will be unemployment created because more people want to work, but less workers are demanded. Uh, so next, uh, have a think about what a national minimum wage is. Can you define what they are? Pause. So hopefully you've got that a national minimum wage is a statutory, so a legal pay floor that employers must pay their workers. It's also a good idea to learn what the actual minimum wage is for over 25s, so you can use that as application in your essays. And the reason I've asked you to discuss national minimum wage is because the trade union diagram is also a national minimum wage diagram. Everything applies. The only thing you have to change is the union wage to a national minimum wage. Okay, which is what this line represents. And at that, everything else applies. So workers, unfortunately, will be let go because employers do not want as many of them. And there will be unemployed created as more people now want to work because the government have introduced new legislation for higher pay. Okay, so that's everything about labour market issues on trade unions and national minimum wage particularly. Okay, so obviously you can repeat the video now and have a go at answering all them questions.